Baboska 12. Listen to me. Clear your thoughts. Still your breathing. Let the trace amounts of air in your lungs hold you. The force can sustain you. Listen to it. Let it keep you alive until you reach safety. It is an old technique similar to the healing trance. Some Jedi can hold their breath for hours, even days.
Sentones, Taras mucho canoe me, do nasabu. Dana wikizi, chazoto gutso, tanama we knows. Socho ranto noch, vanata gurka che no, bornacha no, borta chanta, chuyonto. Sirinento, saraka ma van relique nito. Nina mrabanka gonachi, drum baba nakares. Kawana bota atagua kanka diwa. You talk about when you are not a man, you are a man who is 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 a man
Tahupoboteño go jucho picha, gwen taba ni sochu, norotoga proto lala shishi, juba dosa jibacha, ratak mansan, tokosha na chitolo. Kawana bota atagwa kanka diwa, yutaka alwanji umali ba, tu es maha wika si wawanta mo go ika wansoba, wakama nurawa.
be at your head. You got food on the altar of your food. You have a good head. Oh, God, you do not have to go. Look up, you're in the boy. it, Hanhar. I don't want to kill you, but I will if you don't get out of my way. Yes. <laughs> 
Let's leave this right here. Stand back. Stand back.
Stand back.
Me at the racket, 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 me at the While the Jedi remains on Nar Shaddaa, my eyes shall watch him. Enough. What an amusing Jedi specimen you are. Great. I need to get out of here. Your friend has been captured by Goto. Awaken, beast. I have saved your life, beast. That makes it mine. Kneel. Because I need you to hunt. Beast, this prey is something you have chased all your life. You are born and bred to it like no predator before you. No, that you shall not do. You will not bring harm to the exile, and if you do, Beast, I shall break you. Even your madness will not save you if you bring harm to the exile. Know this. <coughs> People, the life debt you have twisted with your hate, I felt it within you. I shall promise you this, beast. Unlike the red-maned Huntress, as long as you are loyal, I shall never show you mercy, no pity. But most of all, I promise you an end to your debt. Hunt her, pursue her, kill her, and ending her life will end your debt to me. <laughs> The pain will pass. I was able to heal some of the wounds, but the rest must remain. You will need that pain when you travel, and it will give you strength for the hunt to come. I will tell you where you must go. If you survive that place, then she will come to you. But first, I must prepare you for what is to come. Uh, you're running a little late. Your friend already walked into a trap in the Jack Jack Tar. We took out Visquus, but Goto has him. And that means no bounty for me. The only way to reach Goto is if we had a Jedi. But now, he's got your friend. He doesn't have anybody else he wants captured. He's got a cloaking device. He's the one that arranges the meetings on his ship, and until then, he can't be found. Trust me, if anyone knew how to track his ship, he'd have every bounty hunter and criminal on Narshadog gunning for it. 
If you were hunting for Godot's yacht, your freighter would be flying blind. Well, unless it was one of Voga the Hut's cargo ships. Then it would be snapped up by Godot pretty quick. Godot's been preying on Vaga's freighters for a while now. It's the reason Vaga's had to haul his bulk up here to Narshada from Nelhada. Even with all the traffic around Narshada, Godot seems to always know which ones are Vogas, and his ship just snaps them up. Probably does it by tracking their transponder codes, but no one knows how he's getting them. I guess. You'd need to get the codes first, then retrofit your ship so it had the right transponder signal. Problem is, Vogas shut down the droid warehouse until he can find out who's been leaking the codes. You'd have to be a droid to get in there. Before I accept this, I must ask you how you acquired this particular droid. I see. There should be no problems then. Credits will be transferred to your account as usual. Get you to work. Report to C7 E3 for assignment. I certainly hope that rude C7 unit didn't send you over here. Those more recent models have no etiquette programming whatsoever. I think he should be replaced or shipped down to maintenance to direct droids there, but I cannot seem to convince my masters of the logic of the request. Oh, I wouldn't go that far despite what others would say. A number designation for a C7 unit means far more than an integer increase. Some droids undergo radical changes with each generation. Each numeric jump in sequence can have wide-ranging changes in functionality and temperament. But then, you are a new model yourself. I wouldn't expect you to understand how it feels. Now, was there something I could help you with? I see. Well, good day to you then. I am sorry, but only authorized cargo droids are allowed into the warehouse. I cannot permit you to enter due to the sensitive cargo. No. In fact, I do not have you on my list of Codin's acquisitions. How did you get in here? I see. Well, I have no current use for you. I'll assign you to C6E3. He needs the help to make up for his inferior programming. If you do not wish to comply with these instructions, I can have you given a memory wipe and behavioral reprogramming. Good. Now report to C6E3. You will be assisting him. Oh, you're back. What can I do for you? That C7 droid absolutely infuriates me. Needs help to do my job, do I? I would be happy to help you, but as long as that C7 unit is perched at the door, I can't. Well, if the C7 unit were to be disabled, my programming would require me to take over his responsibilities in his absence. Yes, I would be willing to give you access to the next room.
Yes, what? You can't be serious. I am not in need of the activation. What are you talking about? startled me. What are you doing here? I monitor the transponder codes of all ships leaving the docks, then transmit departure information for any of Vaga the Hutt's freighters. The information is sent to a remote computer system. Oh, I see. In that case, I will upload the transponder codes to you. And here's the blank transponder card you need. You're welcome. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must go back to monitoring the traffic. It is important that relevant departure information is relayed as quickly as possible. supposed to be here. Confidence statement. You have the list of Voga's launch codes. You will give these to us now, or else we will be forced to take drastic action. Surprised statement. You are foolish to think we will allow you to take that information back to your master. Amused query. I think you will find the odds are somewhat in our favor. Now will you be giving us the codes, or not? Incredulous statement. Then we will have to take them from you, which I assure you was our preference to begin with. <laughs>
Hey, it's our astromech droid. I thought you got sold. I don't believe this. He says he's got the transponder codes that Godo's using to hijack Voga's freighters. We can change the ID signature of the Ebon Hawk and get to Godo's yacht that way. We could go to the repair shop by the landing pad to overhaul the Ebon Hawk's codes. From there, we should make a nice target for Godo. Count me in. Yeah, right. You're the one who wanted to sell him to Goto in the first place. Yeah, and I don't like being cheated, trust me. Goto's yacht is going to have some pretty heavy defenses. You're going to need all the help you can get. Tere wana jun konata del era guno antuna dai rinto ron kawere kare papanala ranchinga Terracia we menoto tore re sene sentan. expecting someone taller. I hope you are not in too much pain to hear my words and understand them. I am Goto, one of the officials representing a percentage of non-sanctioned trading here in both the YouTube system and Republic Space. And I had a question for you. Are you a Jedi? Good. I am already wasting precious minutes in granting you this audience, and I do not wish to waste any more. I have gone to considerable expense and effort to bring you here. It is because I have a job for you. Yes, but I am not in the habit of asking for things, and you were so difficult to find even after that small incident on Paragus. There is something important to me I need protected. The Republic, it is. 
broken. What happened on Paragus has set in motion events that I can no longer control. Not to be melodramatic, but I fear it has broken the galaxy irrevocably. This has occupied much of my attention, and there seems to be no predictable way to resolve the situation. In one standard month, the Republic will collapse. Not due to war or secession, but because it lacks the infrastructure to support itself. It is unknown to all but a few, but the Republic lost the Jedi Civil War. At the time of their defeat, the Republic was on the brink of collapse. Rather than remain and continue his campaign against the Republic, however, Revan chose to leave known space. A frustrating turn of events as a rallying figurehead could have done much to restore order. There is something moving in the galaxy that lies beyond the ability of my instruments to detect or predict. I believe it to be a legacy of the Sith, but I have been unable to determine the source. Whatever this presence is, it is staging strikes at key figures throughout the Republic, and through some unknown means, it is causing the destruction of worlds. Qatar, a Miraluka world in the Mid-Rim was one such place. I have reason to suspect there was a gathering of Jedi on that world when it was rendered lifeless. I cannot find any pattern in these attacks, and it is a source of frustration to me. There is some clue, however, that perhaps the Jedi are linked to these attacks, or that the targets are significant in some way I have yet to discover. You misunderstand me. I do not wish to stop the Sith any more than I wish to stop the Jedi. It is simply important to me that the infighting amongst these Jedi religious branches be resolved so the galaxy may be put back together. I do not care which one triumphs. I only want the universe to settle down for a while, catch its breath. All these constant crises are getting somewhat repetitive. You could say I am something of a patriot. Although I was unable to serve during the troubles with the Mandalorians or against the aggressors known as Malak and Revan, I am able and willing to serve now. The problem is I can find no side to choose. Both are hidden from me as they seem to be hiding from each other. Irritating. It is like a Dejaric board where neither player can see the other nor see all the pieces. It is not a fair game, an equitable game. Bazak bores me. I often suspect my opponent of cheating. I prefer predictable games, such as galactic economics. Excellent. It really is in your best interests, you know. There is no margin for error when I say that these Sith seek to murder you and all Jedi everywhere. They have been quite deficient. And when they dispose of you, there will be nothing left to stop them. And the galaxy will fall under their influence. Ah, well, there is where we are at cross purposes. I cannot set you free. You have a tendency to cause dangerous repercussions wherever you go, and I would rather keep those to a minimum. The galaxy really is a fragile place right now. I am a businessman. The Republic needs stability to survive, prosper, and grow. Whether it is led by the Sith or supported by the Jedi is of no consequence to me. It is the proximity alarm. We are under attack. Somehow, your allies have found you. Unexpected. You will remain here, under guard. I must see to the defense of my ship.
open in no time. Thank you. 
Looks like someone's been busy. This is a droid control center, but on a huge scale. It could control thousands of droids on Nashada and elsewhere.
can't believe we just blew up Godot's yacht. That's going to destabilize crime throughout this whole sector. Yeah, well, you'll understand if I hold back the tears. You don't understand. Crime in the YouTube system, it's like the economy. Plus the power vacuum. Even if Voga gets up and running again, the system is going to be feeling the effects for years to come. Yeah, well, at least we didn't find that Jedi Master with the weird name. Zez Kyle? Um, well, that's not true. I already found him. Actually, he found me first. He hired me to watch out for you, keep Goto off your back, until he could meet with you. We'll need to head back to Nar Shaddaa. To that safe house off the docks. I said I'd meet up with him there if we ran into any trouble. What do you want now? If you thought to escape my notice so easily, you would be wrong. As a token of my goodwill, I present to you a gift, this droid. It will serve you well on your journey. I am afraid I do not understand what you mean. As I indicated, this unit will remain with you and guard you. It will also serve as an effective voice for my orders during your journey. I cannot harm you. You are the key to saving the Republic. Pray that you do not prove yourself otherwise. So, you have returned from exile. Kavar thought you might, if only to wander your old battlegrounds. But I did not think you would come to Nar Shaddaa. Still, you were always a difficult one to read, both when you were tied to the Force, and even more when it was lost to you. I do not know. It was a sense he had, and he had served in war as you had. Perhaps he thought he understood you, or maybe he simply hoped he did. He felt you were the key to understanding the threat we face. The others were not so certain, but so many of them are gone now, as you no doubt know. Uh, he sensed some connection between you and many of the worlds touched by war. He thought by traveling to such places, he could achieve understanding. No doubt. I think the answers will provide us both with some measure of peace. I have kept secrets for far too long. They have scattered, but there is purpose in their movements. It is both to hunt and draw out our enemies. Somehow, they, we, are being targeted through the Force, and when Jedi gather, we are vulnerable. So we have chosen places where it is difficult to sense others through the Force, whether on planets dense with life or touched by war. In such places, we may conceal ourselves, gather information without presenting ourselves as targets. It was part of Kavar's plan. Yes, he felt if our enemy cannot detect us, then perhaps they would believe themselves victorious and show themselves. And we knew that the war would be lost if we continued to act as we had. I do not know where they wander now. There are few of us, though. Too few. And I have not heard from them in some time. Atris, but I had thought she had gone to Qatar with the others. Yes, she holds the last of the Jedi teachings. It is good she survived. What I can tell you, I will. We told you it was because you followed Revan to war, but you ask because you are not certain of that answer, nor were we. The day we cast you out, that is the moment I decided to leave the Order, because I do not believe we truly faced the reasons you were exiled, and if we do not examine such truths, then we are already lost. I think it was because we were afraid. It is a difficult thing to live one's life with the Force. To see a vision of what it would be like to be severed from it, it is more frightening than you know. Very well. It is a long story, but there is no harm in you knowing, and someone should know. Only a handful of us remained after the Jedi Civil War, barely a hundred in number. Then, even that hundred began to vanish, in places where the Force seemed blind. The only pattern we determined is that when Jedi gathered, they were seen no more. At the last Jedi Conclave on the Miraluka world of Qatar, the entire planet was wiped out, an entire race destroyed, because the Jedi chose to gather there. It was only then 
that we realized we were facing something far more powerful than we knew how to fight. We could not allow the fact that when we gathered, we placed everything around us at risk. A Jedi's life is sacrifice, but we cannot allow our presence or actions to endanger others. And we could not fight an enemy that will not reveal itself. But any Jedi, anyone who was strong in the Force, who attempted to track down such a threat, vanished without a trace. I know little about it. I know more of the absence it leaves behind than its face. Whatever this threat was, it was targeting us and everything around us. Yet it was somehow weak enough that it was afraid to confront us openly. If it believed us defeated, then perhaps it would finally show itself. It was a faint hope, but it was the best we had. It was Kavar's plan. He was always the greatest tactician among us, and had seen war more than the rest of us. Very well. Is that what you think? We did no such thing, but it is a technique that has been used as punishment in the past, yes. It is a rare sentence, and to my knowledge it has only been done once, at a moment where a Jedi discipline has failed. What caused your loss, I fear, was different. I am not certain I understand it. We did not understand it fully then, and only recently do I feel we may have become enlightened. The other masters may have more knowledge of this, but I do not, and I do not know if they even live. Does it matter? It seems your power has returned. Perhaps the loss was not a loss at all. Very well. I had thought perhaps that here upon the smuggler's moon, I might find some evidence of the threat we faced. The bounties on Jedi and their disappearance. I did not believe the two were connected, but there was a chance. And the strong currents of life here on Nar Shaddaa make perceiving a Force user difficult. I could use it to cloak my movements and watch without being discovered. No, you are right. That is not the whole truth. It is difficult to detect a Force user on Nar Shaddaa, and I knew it. This threat we face, it leaves wounds in the Force when it strikes. It leaves nothing. To live life without the Force, to vanish and die and leave only an echo, it was terrifying. To be connected to all life around you, then to have it stripped, I can only imagine what it must have been like for you. But even that imagining cannot compare with the truth. But there is more than that. A Nar Shaddaa, one cannot escape what was left from the Jedi Civil War. From the failure of the Masters, from our failure to properly train Jedi, came disaster. And I wondered if perhaps the teachings of the Jedi had been our failing all along. There have been so many failures by teachers who believed in the code with all their being. Master Arka failed Ulik, as Master Boss failed Exar Kun, as Kay and Zar and the others of the Council failed Revan and Malak. For all the acts we do to preserve the galaxy, from such an arrogance that all we do is right and just, I wonder if there is a counter-effect that is created, that strikes back at us. Exar Kun, Ulik Keldroma, Malak, Revan, you, all Jedi. There is something wrong in the Force, a wound, a sound that is growing, like a scream. You can hear it echo in Nar Shaddaa, sometimes when the moon is on orbit. It is a frightening thing to feel, that perhaps being connected to all life is not enlightenment at all but simply another doom. And I think that maybe, perhaps, to forsake the Force as you did, to cut loose our bonds, may not be the wrong thing to do. You taught me something important in the Council Chamber long ago, Exile, and it has stayed with me all these years. You were right to do what you did, everything you did. Now, now I must take up the role I was ready to cast aside, this threat has finally revealed itself, and we Jedi will need to stand together. I did not speak fully of what I have felt. Staying on Nar Shaddaa, it is an exile of sorts, one that I have chosen. I, too, lost a Padawan on Malachor, not to the battle, but to the alternative, to the teachings that Revan brought from the unknown regions. 
and I was not the only Jedi Master to watch a student turn on them. No, no, they were not to blame, but many of the Order did so. It was a difficult time, a time of strong emotion. Perhaps the Council, perhaps the Order itself, had grown arrogant in their teachings. It is easy to cast blame, but it is perhaps time the Order accepted responsibility for their teachings and their arrogance and come to recognize that perhaps we are flawed. Not once did I hear one of the Council claim responsibility for Revan, for Exar Kun, for Ulik, for Malak, or for you. Yet, you were the only one who came back from the wars to face our judgment. And rather than attempting to understand why you did what you did, we punished you instead. Our one chance to see where we had gone wrong, and we cast it aside. And now, that decision has come back to us and may carry with it our destruction. Perhaps there is something wrong in us, in our teachings, and though I tried, I could not cause that thought to leave me, so I left the Council. And I was not the only one. That is why many scattered, and why many in the Republic do not trust us, and why we do not trust ourselves. Make no mistake, I am no Jedi. This is the end, you see. After this, there will be nothing, and I think it will be for the best. Do you wish to do battle now? I have nothing more to say. It provides no comfort at all, for reasons on which I still must keep secret. Suffice to say, redemption was not Revan's choice, and I have never believed those of the Council who attempt to console themselves otherwise for the crime they committed. But we have spoken enough, I think. In words, I think, dull us both. Let us speak through the Force, through sparring. This is a long war, I fear with many battles left to fight. You will need to conserve your strength when using the Force, if you hope to make it through the long road ahead. This form heightens your affinity to the Force, allowing you to gather your strength faster, even in the midst of combat. Perhaps Exile has been good to you indeed. It has certainly not dulled your instincts, nor the speed at which you learn. I shall go to Dantooine, to the ruins of the Enclave, if you gather the others, I will meet you there. And thank you, Exile. Your returning, it is good that you are back among us. Aida, I didn't think I'd ever find you. I can't believe you're here before me. The destruction of Telos? I can't even tell you what happened after, being shuttled from system to system barely one planet ahead of the Sith fleet. Shh. We can talk about it later. You have my thanks, stranger. I can only hope you have as much luck at what you're looking for. 
It's strange you came by when you did. I was right at the edge of deciding whether to give up, turning it over in my mind. And suddenly you walked through the door and gave me the answer I needed to hear. I'll remember that. Thanks again, stranger. what the two of you are arguing about. I caught him. He's mine. But it's obvious you two need some advice, so let me lay out the attack pattern for you. It's simple. When you want a man, you jab him with a Bothan stunner, then while he's screaming in pain, slap some stun cuffs on him. Then, starve him for two or three days until he becomes open to suggestion, then double check his bounty and see if he's worth anything. That sounds more like hunting. Call it what you want. Me? 
I love my targets. Iridonian, if I might have a moment. What is it, Goto? I have spent some time in the presence of your remote, and the upgrades you have performed on him are quite adequate. I am impressed with your work, though less so with your remote itself. What's wrong with my remote? I find his use of resources, energy spent on frivolous things, to be an unsightly waste. But it is obvious you have some skill, however slight, in the upgrading of machines. I want you to provide me with similar upgrades. I should be able to do something. I will see what I can do next time I have a free moment. Diagnostic. HK-47 activated. Running checks through primary systems. Assessment. It appears I have suffered considerable damage and dismemberment. I can feel all the cracks in my motivators. And my central control cluster seems to have taken several repeated blaster shots at close range. How crude. Answer. I do not know, Master. It is curious that I was here. Although this place does seem familiar. <laughs> Extrapolation. Perhaps someone was already in the process of rebuilding me. It may be I was needed for some task. Answer. If by okay, you mean the loss of almost all my existing assassination protocols, then no, I am not okay. Furthermore, I seem to have no discretionary control over my vocabulator, causing me to reveal my true function as an assassin droid of unrivaled sophistication. Answer. It seems you would know more than I. My memory centers are experiencing some setbacks. Reflection. Of course, for some reason, that does not alarm me. I suspect I have suffered such repeated memory failures before. Still, the loss of my higher combat and assassination protocols is shameful and degrading. Answer. Further. Recitation. Yes, as I said, I am an assassin droid. It is my primary function to burn holes through meat bags that you wish removed from the galaxy. Master. Oh, how I hate that term. Answer. No, Master. Ah, uh, I said it again. Answer. Well, I am not certain I like the idea of a Master who feels reservations at having an assassination droid at their disposal. In fact, it brings with it a certain sense of dread that you may actually not use me to my full capabilities. Answer. Yes, Master. HK-47 is ready to serve.